is Travis, co-founder of Kajabi, and today we're doing a Kajabi customer hero. And today I have Shelia Stevens. Thank you, Shelia, for coming in the office today. Thanks for inviting me. Glad to be here. Hi, everyone. Yeah, and you came all the way from Germany. I did. I did. Quite a long ways, a couple thousand miles. And do you come you come to California often? Like, are you here quite a bit? Or well, how'd you guys end up? You're here with your husband, too? Yeah. He's off camera right now? Yeah, he's off camera in the background. So, <laughs> um, actually, I'm American. And I've been living over in Germany for 22 years okay. um, due to my German husband. So falling in love from uh, college and moving over there. And okay. um, I get back to the U.S. about mm, two, three times a year, depending on what's going on. And this year, um, I'm doing a coach training here in California over in Venice Beach. And so okay, cool. that's why we're here. Very cool. Now, what is your brand? What do you, what do you call yourself? Yeah. Online? So in Germany, I am positioned as the virtual coach. And okay. um, my website is right under my name at ShellyaStevens.com. Okay. And um, I teach other coaches, trainers, consultants, and um, service professionals that are heart-centered, heart-driven, how to position themselves successfully in the marketplace, okay. um, how to win clients on a continual basis, and uh, turn their expertise into their business that they can live from and that they love. Very cool. So you, I was going to say you have no accent because obviously you were born in America. Yeah. Did you went over there for college? Is that how you, is that what you said? No, or I, was, you... I was actually studying in Atlanta, Georgia um, at a small women's college, Agnes Scott, go Scotties. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Heiko was on an exchange program with Georgia Tech. He was studying to be an aerospace engineer. Okay. They had no women. We had no men. So it was oh. just the logical thing to get together. And that's how I met him. And that's why I went to Germany. Very cool. Yeah. And how long have you been doing like coaching? the virtual coaching, the stuff that you're working on right now? Yeah. So actually, I've been in business for about seven years. Okay. Um, before that, I was in marketing. So 14 years of agency, global brands kind of things. And um, I got out of that business and got into coaching and training after a master's degree that I did. And that's how long I've been doing my business. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then w what made you decide, you know, I'm going to start doing this online. I'm going to start coaching. I'm going to start helping other people. Yeah. What was that like? Yeah, so when I originally started thinking about what, who am I going to help, what am mm -hmm. I going to do, I, I started out like the majority of people which is not knowing who the hell I'm going to help or what sure. I'm going to do, right? Sure. So um, I started to look toward the um, Anglo-Saxon market, which is what we would see in Germany. So in uh, the U.S., the U.K., uh, New Zealand, whatever, you know, all the English-speaking spaces. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 2008, 2009. Okay. And I started to see um, other people, coaches who were working online. And one of my um, people who was I really looked up to was Nicola Bird. I don't know if you've heard of her. Mm -hmm. She created um, an online product like pre-Kajabi days. Um, okay. it, Jigsaw Box is the name of it. It still exists today. Very cool. And I saw her coaching other coaches and other trainers and uh, using it using the virtual space to do that. Okay. And she was a huge inspiration for me. So um, I just thought, I want to go in that direction. And I didn't know at the time um, how would exactly I be helping the other coaches, but I knew it may be something to do with their business, something to do with creating an online space. Yeah. So how was she delivering that content back then? How were you consuming, like getting that or like learning about her? Yeah, so the majority of um, things that I found out about Nicola were via webinars. So she mm -hmm. would hold live webinars and her big model back in the day was creating boot camps. So okay. online boot camps of around six to seven weeks, a price point of nine ninety seven was kind of the model back then, and mm -hmm. then she would get a huge number of people on board, and um, she would then take them through this kind of high intensity learning experience. Sure. Um, so there were some video components, there were some text, but it was it wasn't as well developed as, as things are today. So everything was kind of put together on um, toothpicks and, and needles. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So after taking that, how long was it before you decided, okay, I'm going to start coaching other people, I'm going to start helping other people? I mean, I just got started with it right away. So okay. it, it didn't take long at all. And um, in the beginning, what I originally did was I, I, I really saw her as some, someone I wanted to, what do you say, emulate? Sure. In, in the English, sometimes my English is failing. Excuse me for that. It's just <laughs> well, I've heard you speak German and it, it, I would have no idea. That, of course, I don't speak German fluently. Yeah. But it, do, do most of your courses, are you, are you delivering them in English? Only, only German. Really? Yeah, only wow. German. Yeah, absolutely. That's very cool. I'll have more questions about that later, but go ahead, tell yeah. me. So you first got started. Yeah, so I, went, I was emulating her. So the first thing that I attempted to do was to sell online boot camps mm -hmm. um, to my target market. And um, I succeeded at that, but it was really hard to keep, keep it going because I had 100 people on my list. I sold to 10 people and had I mean, 10,000. I was like on 
cloud nine. That's awesome. But I just couldn't repeat it in the next 12 months because mm. I'd already just kind of eliminated the number of people on my list that would have been uh, ready to, sure. to go. So I realized either I'm going to have to get really strong at list building or I'm going to have to go to a one-on-one -on -one model. Mm. And since the German market is really not as um, up to speed as the American market, so we were, that was like, you have to imagine, everything that happens here takes about four to five years to get over there, really fixed in, into the marketplace. Interesting. So I decided to go for the one-on-one -on -one model, and that's where I was for the, the first five years of my business. Okay. How were you delivering that one-on-one -on -one experience? Were you using video? Were you using phone? Like, how, how did you yeah. connect with those customers? Yeah. So. I was marketing via webinar, email marketing and all that, okay. and the delivery was classic Skype. So one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, um, I would sell six-month programs and we would work mm. together over that time period. Okay. These days, the one-on-one -on -one components are more on Zoom or they're small yeah, sure. coaching kind of things, but yeah. So along that journey, what kind of technologies did you use before Kajabi? I mean, how, oh how are you gosh. trying to deliver your content? You want to get started on this? Because I, I have a whole... Yeah, because like, I want to hear like, how did you eventually make it to where you were like, okay, I'm going to start using Kajabi. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> the classic way that I went forward is probably how the majority of people move forward. Forward, which mm -hmm. is they want to keep their budget as far as software technology really low sure so I was attempting to stay under a hundred euros uh, let's say that's a hundred dollars a month okay and I was attempting to kind of just puzzle piece everything together so WordPress press with WordPress sure. plugins mm -hmm. um, optimized press I think I used for a while for some of the landing pages um, separate email marketing system, um, separate webinar technology. So just piece by piece, putting all those things together. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And how long did you do that before you, you, you found Kajabi? How did you even find us? Okay. So how I found Kajabi was I started to get to a point in my business where I was pretty book solid all the time. Mm -hmm. And I started to think, um, how am I going to go back to that original idea, which is serving more people at once. Mm -hmm. And, um, I started to think about group and membership um, sites okay. and so I started asking around in my mastermind and um, someone who I've been masterminding for the last five or six years Katie Carolyn hi Katie <laughs> <laughs> she um, was on a program with Brandon Burchard okay and uh, she said I think Brandon uses Kajabi you need to check out Kajabi yeah, sure. but that was before you guys went to next it was before you went to new Kajabi. new is what we call the current version yeah which is the only version of Kajabi now but yeah, yeah exactly so I kind of started looking into that but it looked a bit complex at the time mm -hmm. and so I was like mm, Katie I don't think that's the right thing for me and then I just kind of observed you guys and watched you moving forward and okay. at some point you guys launched next and I thought it was the most elegant and beautiful setup that I had seen and I got right on board with that and then I've been using Kajabi ever since now in the new version very cool tell me some of the ways you're using Kajabi like do you have how, how many courses have you built in there yeah. what has that process been like for you yeah so okay I'm a huge Kajabi nerd and fan All, <laughs> everybody knows that you know I love Kajabi just beyond belief um, I use it in all aspects of my business like if I could at, like, I'm sure it will come to this point mm -hmm. I would use Kajabi for everything from I like that yeah I want to be great you wouldn't that be cool <laughs> yes but um, I since I'm working in the European market we have some different regulations we mm -hmm. have uh, different data protection regulations, we have different uh, VAT regulations, mm -hmm. um, we have different opt-in regulations. I don't know if you know all of this. Do you know this? I do because we have to hear about it a lot because we're trying to make sure we can help you guys as much as, as we can and still serve yeah. every, everybody else because there's so many different needs right now. So yeah. it's a little bit more complicated, definitely. Yeah, so we have to so. talk about that after the interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how you say that it takes a couple years for things to get there. Yeah. But then when it comes to like uh, compliance and regulations, I feel like that part of the world is, is even more yeah. regulated than where we are like it here totally in the U is. United States. So totally we're constantly trying to balance, okay, how do we keep up with that? And how do we see where it's going here? And how do we help you and the customer? Yeah. I know there's all these rules and regulations, but what actually still helps them? Sometimes those get in the way. Yeah. Sometimes they're totally helpful and they're necessary. So yeah. it is, it's quite a, quite a juggling act. You will get there. I'll help you get there. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so, so you start moving everything to Kajabi. How has your business been since you moved everything? Yeah. Okay. So right now what I, what I do with Kajabi is a number of things. So I've got, um, some lead, lead magnets on there. So mm -hmm. I use it very much as a system to collect email addresses and get people on board kind of experiencing already what I do um, I've got an online shop set up for my marketing and business work that I do okay. so 
I've got some self-study programs in there. I've got my full proprietary system in there that I just launched the day before we came. Oh, wow. was the final day of the launch, which uh, did really well. So awesome. I was excited about that. Um, we've also got, um, I've got a corporation going with Sandra Heim. Hi, Sandra. So I'm going to say hi to everybody <laughs> That's today. That's good. You should. Then they're gonna, watching it. Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> so um, I've got a corporation going with her. And what we do is sort of a mindset for entrepreneurs. Okay. And so we've got a whole group program going there. Um, my one-on-one -on -one clients can access it. So it's pretty much in every aspect of, of my business. Okay. Who are you using for payments? You're not you're, you're not able to use Stripe no. at this point. You're, who are you using to, to do that in the European? market mm -hmm. so in Germany um, the standard for online payment is Digistore 24 I don't know if you've heard of it I haven't heard of that one okay okay so they pretty much all the online entrepreneurs in Germany will use Digistore 24 and mm -hmm. so you want to be using that program anyway because all the affiliates are running over that sure. so the majority of people who want to um, promote you will ask you if you can give them the promo code for Digistore 24 I got it. Okay. It integrates seamlessly with Kajabi, and I don't know why, but it's it's a drop down. We have that all planned. Okay, you have that all planned. <laughs> yeah. It's a drop down in um in their system. And okay. In in their IPN section. That is really good to know. So if you are in Germany, we are already ready to go. So that's good to know. And yeah. if you are in other countries and you have an English speaking product, um, mm -hmm. Digistore comes in German and in English. Wow. So you can also use that for the whole VAT regulations that they've got going on there. That is good to know. I'm sure that will be in the blog. It'll be very helpful for people from that part of the world. That's really cool. So tell me about your courses. This is the part that I think is really cool. Yeah. You're obviously fluent in both languages, but you deliver all of your content in German. Yes. So tell me about the type of customer you are. Are you only targeting, obviously, German speaking yeah. customers in that region? Yes, I am. So um, in Germany, it's called the Dach, Dach region. So Germany is Deutschland. Okay. Then you've got A, which is Austria. And sure. then the CH is Switzerland. Okay. So it's all German speaking people. And recently on a live webinar, I found out from a Belgian lady, she thought I was leaving them out. There's a small <laughs> section. <laughs> There's a small section um, of the Belgians who do speak German. Okay. So I speak to that, that market and I really specifically market to those people. Okay. Yeah. And how are you marketing to them? What kind of, t are you using Facebook? Is there a way to, to yeah. do that where you're like, I only want German speaking potential customers? Yeah. So, for example, the launch before we came out was mm -hmm. um, an entire Facebook Live um, launch on, on Facebook. Yeah, so that, that's one way to target them. Um, we're, we're a smaller market than you guys have, so sure. everybody knows everybody else in the online business. Which is a great thing. Like, yeah. I think it's actually better sometimes when your market is a little bit smaller, because like you said, you get to know everybody. Totally. You're able to brand yourself better. The, the whole concept of like, know, and trust is yep. a lot easier process, Absolutely. I would assume. Absolutely. Versus the English speaking world is, is, is a lot. And I always think about like someone who's good at something, let's say in the United States, but you speak Spanish, like why aren't you hitting the Spanish speaking market? Yeah. You actually could take and re, like retrofit all your content, mm -hmm. rebrand yourself and actually have maybe even a new, an entire new business model. So yeah. I love hearing how you're an English speaker, but you're also just nailing it within the German speaking region, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, like, I, and everyone always asks me like, why are you doing that, Shalia? You could just do the, the English speaking space. And I think if you, I think I have felt like a calling. Mm -hmm. I just, it just felt like something I wanted to do. It's not, it wasn't a strategic decision. It wasn't a business decision. It was just like, I, I just felt the calling to work with them that way, that's so. very cool. You said something cool when we were walking in, how you're trying to tell everybody in Europe that they need to be on Kajabi. They need to be on Kajabi. Tell me about that experience. Like, why do you say that? What makes you think that? Well, okay, so the number one reason I think for me personally is I, I'm a really aesthetically oriented person. Mm -hmm. I, I love the way that Kajabi is set up and that you can create beautiful digital properties from your website to your landing page to your courses. You have so many options through the templates. Mm -hmm. It's easy to use. Like the majority of solopreneurs that I know don't want to spend a lot of money working with programmers. Um, so you can do everything yourself. Um, and it's not that, you know, the majority of people in the German market, they're working with WordPress mm -hmm. and they're working with plugins and they're trying to do everything for free. Sure. It's a whole different brand experience. Um, it doesn't look as professional. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of just stickiness in the background. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's a more professional solution. And I, I, I think- I, I definitely agree, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is interesting how when you're first starting out as an entrepreneur, you want to try to save as much money as possible. You do. So you just think logically this must be this must be how I go. Install the plugin, yeah. get the free hosting, and 
that seems smart, but the amount of time you're wasting, yeah. the brand you're not building, the ability to expand your business isn't gonna be there. So yeah. it's kind of cool how you're already out there preaching that and telling everybody. So you need to get on Kajabi, that's what I'm telling them, yeah. Very cool, so tell me <laughs> along this journey, what do you think has been your biggest mistakes you've made or where do you feel like you got stuck? Well, I think what, what, I, what I get stuck is with the content. So mm -hmm. I meet a lot of people, I work with a lot of other people who want to get their expertise online, mm -hmm. right? And what they get stuck on is the technology. So they can't figure out how to get all the technology fitted together. They get stuck on the marketing, they get stuck on the list building. Mm -hmm. that, those three things have never been my problem. Okay. The biggest thing that I get stuck on is content creation. Okay. Because I intrinsically am an input person. Mm. I like to learn things, I like to suck in that information, and I like like to go to classes and all that kind of stuff but now I'm happy to keep it for myself okay so I don't have to go out there and be like but if you want to build a business based on information you need to get that output out there sure so one of the big struggles that I had um, getting my products online and all that was really getting the content out there and I had sure. to find a way to do that okay and yeah. what was your what was your breakthrough like yeah. how did you get get past that so two things number one was since i'm a visual person and i like to create things like it's mm -hmm. like um like someone else would paint for me kajabi is a painting canvas very cool yeah so i like to fill the <clears throat> the program up with just kind of um, an emptiness like at first just getting the structure and the infrastructure done okay. and then it's waiting to be filled with the content so I'll, I'll have that structure set up in the beginning and then what i realized about myself is like every time i would try to sit down in front of the computer I would just be forcing myself to make an appointment with myself. Mm -hmm. I would just have no energy. I mm. would sit in front of the computer. It would just bore me to death. Okay. And so I was procrastinating and procrastinating and procrastinating. So I thought to myself, what can I do that makes me feel excited and happy? And um, so I thought, well, what if I went out there and I made live webinars mm -hmm. and I created the content with my entire community? Yeah. Because I really enjoy the interaction. Um, I needed that sort of deadline on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would be committing to a date. I told everybody I'm going to be there. They signed up for it. Mm -hmm. So now I have to come and present and do that content. That's a great idea. So what were you delivering on? Were you on like Zoom and you like had video no. or? No. I was using GoToWebinar. Okay. And um, what I did was I, I had a graphic designer come in and we set up the whole template for the slides so that later they would look good in Kajabi on the video. Okay. Um, and so we would do the live videos and then I would have a video editor go back in and get rid of all the überflüssig, what's the word in English? Um, oh, this is cool. Uber, uber, what's so überflüssig? Superfluous. Superfluous, the extra, sure. the extra things in the yeah. webinar that weren't necessary. And so we cut it to be a kind of more of a course oriented sure i've seen your stuff it's very good so that's how you're doing that that's how we're doing and that. you almost have where you have like it's a it's a screen and screen type of yep. setup so it's like your video and that's from the webinar yep and then you just took that beautiful like presentation like keynote or powerpoint slides yep. back there that is that's a good tip. It looks very professional. Okay. And you, so you just have to think a little bit in advance. And um, so, but everybody in the German market, all my mastermind partners that I um, spoke with, they were saying, Shelly, don't do it that way. <laughs> really? Yeah, because they were saying, if you go and give all of your know-how for free, that is. then no one's going to buy anything. Why that's... would you do that? Yeah, exactly. You want to know why I did it? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, so it, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to get it out there if I, if I don't that's do right. it that yeah, way. Sure. So that's going to be a zero, a zero business. Okay. Um, so I thought, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to do it. And so mm -hmm. what I did was I set up sprints. Have you ever done sprints before? Sure. I, I might be using a different term, but yeah, I know that's something that Matt, who's back here all the time, like our flash builds, we talk about marketing. So, so it's kind of like from the world of scrum, right? So you sure. do, so you do those, those sprints that we mm -hmm. used to do in the agency when we would develop stuff. Yep. And so what I would do is I'll sprint for a month and I'll do four webinars live, okay. and that becomes four course lessons, wow, which okay. makes up one module, Okay. and then I would take a month off and give myself a break. So I think that happens to a lot of people who sure. aren't really great at content building. They get burned out on having to deliver. It can be exhausting creating content. It can be. Yeah. So if you were doing on and off, I was giving myself a really intensive month and then one month off. Okay. And so over the course of a year, I had six modules. I built that entire proprietary, proprietary system that way. Yeah. Yeah. So you literally had these webinars and you gave them away for free. Yep. People came and watched them. Were they asking you questions while you were doing the webinar? They were asking me questions. They were interacting. Oh, yeah. wow. That's a, that's a great idea. So. 
But people in your market, people everywhere on the internet will always say, why would you give it away for free? Yeah. But the reality is people get to like you, know you and trust you, like I talked about earlier. Yeah. And then you would come back and you'd say, I have all this curated content available. And totally. then you would pitch the concept of buy into this course. It was the best thing that I ever did because um, it was many folds of, of results that happened. Mm -hmm. So number one, um, my one-on-one -on -one clients, if you're a one-on-one -on -one coach and you're already working one-on-one -on -one, but you want to get more ways to engage with your clients, mm -hmm. they were all coming to the webinars. Sure. So we were getting a better relationship, more time together. Yeah. Um, I was building my list because every time you sign someone up for a webinar, you're bringing people on board your email yeah. list. Um, I was creating more visibility in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. All of my colleagues and cooperation partners were getting aware of what she's doing, these sprints, what's going on? She's, yes. she's doing all this stuff. So that was really cool. Um, also, I generated like a ton of one-on-one -on -one business that I wouldn't have otherwise. Like people would, they would literally go to all of the stuff, Yeah, yeah. but they'd still want to come to one-on-one -on -one coaching. That is really cool. Wait, so you gave away everything for free? Everything. And then they still wanted to pay you a premium to have one-on-one. -on -one, yes. And they still wanted to pay you for the course when it came out. Yes. And nobody ever said, wait a minute, you already gave this to me for free. Nobody said nobody, nobody said that. Ever. And, and yeah. no, and, and the cool thing is, and, and I totally underestimated this, and um, probably a lot of people who are listening today have read the book Launch um, by yeah. Jeff Walker. It's of pretty, course. pretty popular, probably mm -hmm. in the US. And what he talks about are seed launches. And he would always say, do a seed launch because um, you're going to not only be creating content and building your list and marketing and getting visibility, but you're going to be getting direct feedback sure. from the people. Mm -hmm. And that was worth its weight. Give gold. us the, like a, a 30 second like explanation of what a seed launch is. So a seed launch is like you would um, start off with an idea for a product that you want to create. Mm -hmm. It may not be in its entire detail, yeah. but you would start bringing people on board for that already. Mm -hmm. And you'd be asking them along the way what they wanted to know and what they wanted to learn. So in Jeff Walker's idea of this, you're, you're really going into interaction with your, your target audience. Mm -hmm. And they're telling you what they want. So you're creating a product right from the get go that you know your market is going to have a high resonance with. Of course. Yeah. It's really smart. So you're almost being um, very transparent, like, I'm going to be working on this right. thing. Here's the idea I have. Are you interested? Opt in. Follow me on this yeah. journey. And then people start giving you that feedback. Totally. And then if you're doing these live free webinars, you're creating the content with them where it's almost like you're creating this synergy of accountability and momentum. Totally. That on your own, it's pretty hard to do. Like totally. I, I, I feel the same way. Whenever I have to fil film things for Kajabi, I'm either super motivated or I've got someone behind the camera that says, all right, it's time to film. Or if it's all on my plate, I will try to shoot it. And it, it's frustrating. I remember when we first started in 2010, I would record myself doing screen flows and listening to my voice. And then I would listen to it back and I was like, oh, this is terrible. Then I would redo it. Then yeah. I would redo it. Then I would redo it. It's, it's a terrible cycle. And it's you're never going to get it perfect. But nope. if you're live, there's no script. There's no no net. You just go for it. It's fresh, too. And mm -hmm. and what I found is is that the more fresh you are, mm -hmm. the more engaging you are, the more people really, it, it sticks with them what you're saying, rather than rehearsed or scripted or, no. or thought, thought too much through. Too much thinking. Too yep. much thinking. Yeah. You would think it would be better if you thought through it more no. or if you tried for perfection, but you'll never get it. Yeah. And, it, and like you said, you went back through, you edited out all the stuff you totally. didn't need. How do you say it in Germ Germany? It's super, what is the word? Superfluous. Um, überflüssig. Oh, I like überflüssig, überflüssig better. Überflüssig. Überflüssig. That's way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. So what is next for you? What is next for what you're working on, for your brand, yeah. throughout this, this next year and in the coming years? Yeah. So, I mean... I don't know about you guys who are listening, but um, I see my business as a really long-term thing. Like I want to do it as long as I can breathe. You know, it's like, it's just I don't. It's not something from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna be moving forward, and and I see my business as a marathon and not a sprint. Even though the webinars were sprints, and sure. Um, so I'm I'm moving from these one-on-one -on -one coaching models toward more um, mix with online group programs. Um, larger lists, so hopefully more people in the self-study programs. I found that um, I've got a lot of women on board in the one-on-one -on -one coaching or the small group programs. Mm -hmm. The men are starting to get on board now because they do more self-study. I don't know if you guys have seen that in your research in the U.S. as well. Yeah. yeah. That probably makes sense. Men are much more like 
do it by myself. Women are more social. Totally. So to having the different learning styles is a great idea. So I'm, I'm starting to pick up some new um, people that mm -hmm. I didn't have on my radar before. Very um, cool. And just developing forward. Um, yeah, like we always do, growing, moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What advice would you give either to yourself starting out or somebody who, who's new, someone who isn't a Kajabi hero yet, what would you tell them? Okay, I've been waiting for this question and I thought about it last night. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> because I see so many people struggling, right? Mm -hmm. I see so many people wanting to create stuff and getting going out there and just getting hung up in their fears um, getting hung up in they're burning themselves out um, they're putting expectations on themselves that are just that's killing them I mean yep. Yep. In, inside they're just feeling really crappy about what their business and you should love your business so that's right here's what I, I got a piece of advice this year that was amazing and I, I've been living by it since since I heard it it's from George Pransky I don't know if you've heard of George Pransky mm -hmm. um, he is in the three piece community um, someone who's been doing it for 40 years mm -hmm. and he's just a very wise person and he said shoot the arrow and where it lands that's the target mm -hmm. interesting and so I was doing it the other way around of course I was creating some idea in my head every launch I would do of a product like this is the number of people that need to be on board mm -hmm. this is the revenue that I need to generate mm -hmm. um, this is the way things need to pan out and if it didn't look exactly that way I was feeling stressed I was demotivated sure. I, I stopped loving launching and I, mm -hmm. I didn't want to create any more products and since I started thinking, shoot that arrow mm -hmm. where it lands, that's the target. That's good advice. Just do what you're doing, and no matter what it ends up looking like, that's the target because the next thing you do is gonna build on that, mm -hmm. and the next thing you do is gonna build on that. And so just be really cool about it. That, that, is, that is good advice. That's, that's, I think we spend so much time trying to be perfect. Yeah. I, I remember when I was a little kid and I would use a BB gun and I would try to shoot like a can or something, yeah. and I was terrible at aiming, so I would always shoot. And then I would see where it hit, and I was like, okay, I gotta move it to the left. Because if I tried to use the actual thing to aim, I could never hit it. So that is really good advice of just shoot. Just shoot. Because action is way more powerful than perfection. Way more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. This is really cool. Well, thank you so much for coming. You're this welcome. has been. I've learned so much. I mean, I've learned a lot about your, your, your niche and your market. And what you've told us about content is huge. I think the breakthroughs people will have from reading this blog and hearing this is just going to be amazing. So I hope so. Good thank, luck, guys. Yeah. Get, do it. Just shoot the arrow. Very cool. How do we find you again online? So um, my website is shelliastevens.com, S-H-A-I-L-I-A. Stevens with ph.com. It's all in German, so if you don't speak German, you just might want to go and have a look. Yeah, well, you, you definitely can see how you're doing everything, which is really, really cool. So, Very cool. thanks for being on. This has been awesome. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. I hope this has inspired you to become a Kajabi hero, and I think you're definitely probably the most stylish Kajabi hero. I've got my t-shirt <laughs> today. I've waiting to put this on. It's so cool. So, thanks again for watching or listening, and soon, I hope I'm interviewing you as the next Kajabi hero. Thanks a lot.